Did you know Asians don't get fat? <laughs> there may be some exceptions. I'm Kento Bento. Okay, this video is on 10 reasons why Asians don't get fat. Now, of course, there are Asians who are fat or chubby. Some might, in fact, be watching this video right now, wondering, why have my Asian genes failed me? So yes, Asians don't get fat. It's a bit of a generalized statement or stereotype, but as a whole, there's definitely some truth to it. And we'll get into why that is in this video. If you look at this map, you can see the obesity rates of each country. The red to orange countries have very high obesity rates. 25 to 40 plus percent of the population is obese, with the US as well as the Pacific Island nations topping the list. The blue to green countries have low obesity rates. About 0 to 10 percent of the population is obese. We know why many of the African countries come under this. Malnutrition and starvation is rampant. But if you look at the Asian countries, most of which have a much higher standard of living, what could be the reasons? I should point out that as a whole in Asia, especially East Asia, obesity rates are increasing. And in some countries like China, it's starting to get quite worrying. So if we were to look at this map a decade or so ago, many of these Asian countries would have had an even lower obesity rate. Genetics is an obvious factor, so I'm gonna leave that one off the list, but it's really not even that. It's not necessarily because of one's genes. There are so many other factors, and I'm gonna get into 10 of them right now. So let's do this. Number one, fish and seafood. Asians eat a lot of seafood. They eat a lot of fish. They love fish. No. Not what I meant. Aside from the protein and nutrients, the biggest benefit to eating fish, I'm sure you've heard, is the omega-3 fatty acids. Fish gives our body and brain the DHA and EPA it needs. EPA in particular has been shown to prevent obesity or at least assist in weight loss. Studies from the American Journal of Nutrition suggest that 1.5 to 2 grams daily of fish oil can produce weight loss of a couple of pounds over a period of a month. Fish oil increases fat metabolism in the body and this enhances weight loss. Everywhere in the world, fish has always been part of man's diet, not just in Asia, but Asian culture, especially Japanese culture, has kept this part of the heritage alive better than most. <laughs> Number two, cooking methods. Everything tastes better deep fried. and it's popular worldwide, including Asia. But I'm sure I don't need to mention how an excess of oily deep fried foods can affect your health and weight. If you compare Western and Asian eating habits, sure, they both consume deep fried foods, but Asian countries vary their cooking methods a lot more. There's a lot less deep frying and a lot more boiling, for example. Some of you may think, well, that can't be true. The Chinese food I eat is usually deep fried before you know being coated in some sort of a sweet sauce. Well, that's probably Chinese American food you used to. Chinese food in America and in many other Western countries is more skewed towards the deep fried simply because it sells better. Chinese food in China is a lot more varied. In fact, deep fried and battered foods hasn't really taken off there. Although contrast this with Japan, a country with a great reputation for health and well-being. They have a lot of deep fried dishes like tempura, tonkatsu, chicken karage. That one's my favorite. It just goes to show that if you practice balance, you can still have the good stuff. Number three. Food perception. How people see and experience food can be different depending on where you are. In America, for example, food is seen more as entertainment. There is a desire, there is joy and anticipation associated with eating. It's a pleasurable event. Not that it isn't in Asian countries, but it's a lot more toned down. <laughs> Usually, eating has more of a practical feel and in many cases closer to being a chore rather than entertainment. That feeling of exhilaration associated with eating is, is much more a Western thing. Then we sprinkle on four kinds of sugar. <laughs> Number four, portion size. Another difference in eating habits is portion size. Asians eat smaller portions. Food is often served in small serving bowls and small plates. And this helps regulate how much is consumed in one sitting. And despite the smaller portions, often the case there is a wider variety on offer. So there's more to choose from as well. Now, if we take a look at America. Yeah, could I get the double quarter pounder with cheese meal? Large or super size? 
I think I'm gonna have to go super size. Number five, leafy greens. Asian portion size in general might be smaller, but their vegetable portion size is consistently larger, especially for leafy greens. Yeah, in Western society, you're always reminded that you have to eat your greens. It's good for you and all that. But in Asia, the difference is they don't even need to be reminded. They don't even need to be coerced. It's just ingrained. And it doesn't hurt that Asian vegetable dishes are often packed with flavor and taste. I just spat at the camera. Contrast that with many Western vegetable dishes, and I'm sorry to say, they can be pretty bland. Would you like some mixed vegetables? Hell no. <gasps> Number six, drink habits. It is a common belief that drinking water, especially cold water, with your meal is a habit that one should avoid as it dilutes your digestive enzymes, your stomach acid, and makes it harder for your stomach to digest food. You all right? Americans often drink cold water or sodas with their meals. Not so much for Asian people, however. Rather, they drink green tea or other hot teas before or after a meal. Now, I should note that many experts say that this is greatly exaggerated and that you can drink water, uh, even cold water, with your meals. So this can be quite confusing. But not everyone reacts the same way and perhaps minimizing or eliminating your drinks may lead to better digestion for some individuals. If you're someone who enjoys drinking water with your meals, that's okay too. There's research enough to support you in this practice. Either way, one thing's for certain. The Asian habit of drinking hot teas, uh, green tea and such, as opposed to say Western teas with their sugar and milk is good for your digestion. It's loaded with antioxidants, lowers blood pressure levels, and can act as a metabolism booster, quite effective in both prevention and reduction of weight gain. Number seven, population density. Now this one's not so obvious. Many Asian countries, well Asian cities, are densely populated. There are lots of people living in small houses or small apartments and everything you need is often just around the corner. There's just a much shorter walking distance. Add to that, many of these cities have extremely efficient and reliable transportation systems, leading one to possibly conclude that many Asian people must exert less energy in their daily lives than their Western counterparts where everything is just more spread out. So surely this is one one reason why Asians should be fatter, but not quite. In actuality, Asian people in this circumstance may end up walking more. This is because with everything being in close proximity, they're more inclined to just walk to their destination. Whereas in many Western countries, distances are often too great, so they end up taking some form of transportation, encouraging less physical exertion. Number eight, fermented foods. So Asians consume more fermented foods, such as miso, natto, tempeh, kimchi, kombucha, just name a few. And this is not just good for your gut health, but helps reduce the overall inflammation in the body. And inflammation is a contributing factor to weight gain and obesity. Those probiotic pills that people take, they work the same way. Unfortunately, in many Western countries, but not all, their food culture does not include much of any fermented foods. But times are changing and people are more aware now of the positive effects. They're eating more fermented foods and for most people, it also tastes good. Natto is a traditional Japanese food made from fermented soybeans. <coughs> that one might take some getting used to. Number nine, snacks and desserts. This one's quite simple. Asian snacks, healthy. Western snacks, nah. Asian snacks and desserts may be rice cakes, red beans, seaweed snacks, nuts, seeds, uh, fruit, a lot of fruit. For Western snacks and desserts, you know, cookies, chips, ice cream, uh, sugary cakes, all that good stuff, but oh so bad for you. Number 10, prevention versus treatment. When it comes to health, fitness, and well-being, Asians practice prevention while others practice treatment. If you deal with a problem before it even gets started, you don't need to treat it. With the Western approach, you have your antibiotics, uh, antacids, NSAIDs, quick temporary remedies that might actually hurt you in the long run. The Asian approach attempts to get to the root of the problem using nutrition, healthy habits, prevention practices. There's meditation, martial arts, and other calming daily rituals that clear your mind, all to strike a balance between, I guess, yin and yang. And yeah, some of these methods may be a bit hokey, or maybe not, but here I'm talking more about the general societal mindset, how they think and react to issues of wellness. Health is not simply the absence of sickness. So prevention versus treatment, you don't need to lose the weight if you're never fat. 
The Chinese might get a lot of things right when it comes to health and beauty, but I'm not so sure that's demonstrated in this video. Click on top to watch five weird Chinese beauty trends on social media, or you can click the one below if you prefer something else. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and if this is your first time watching us, we'd love to have you subscribe because this channel is all about interesting asian -y topics. And I'm speaking really fast because YouTube's new end slate design only lasts 20 seconds max and I don't want to be 